It's Fix It With Fran, where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. And I'm coming at you this What's Growing Wednesday with some of my tips for growing mums. I thought about uh, Fail Pal Darrell. If you never check out Orchids for Dummies, you should. And while I may not know as much about orchids just yet, I have learned a few things about growing mums. And Fail Pal Darrell says each one teach one. So I'm here to share with you some of the tips that I have that made me more of a fan of growing this particular type of flower. Stay tuned check it out and if you like this kind of content please do like and subscribe and share if you find it helpful thanks for watching so here you can already see where i've deadheaded a good little section of flowers that were brown like these and it goes from looking like this kind of dreary like oh this is a bad plant i should just throw them away to looking refreshed and i'll show you even here how you can see where there are new flower blooms that are starting to come out so you want to make sure and it's really best to go through and this, just deadhead these individually because if you try to do a broad sweep you're in danger of cutting off some of these new blooms so I'm going to put the phone down and get back to cutting and then show y'all the final product all right so this is my finished product product finished product the finished project and what you see here is that now all of those places where there were nasty brown mostly spent blooms are gone it's a little ragged looking as far as the shape so i could come back and shape this a little bit better but i didn't want to do too extreme of a pruning and also like i said i wanted to make sure that these buds that are down here that are going to open up aren't cut off either and sometimes when you try to do a big um, balding or shaping um, that can cut off your good blooms and it's best to wait to do a total reshaping if you're going to take these like I am this year I'm going to take these and put them in the ground so you don't want to do an extreme pruning until you're ready to make the transition between the seasons because it's very likely that your blooms may not come back so despite how this looks right now I'm just going to let it be I'll wait to cut these other spent blooms back later and I will give y'all an update hopefully soon where the benefit of doing this let's backtrack is that by cutting off all of the dead and dying blooms like I have a couple here that I probably could still cut off but by doing that you send all of the energy that was actually being expended trying to keep these dying spent blooms alive um, back down into the plant and what does that mean when you send that energy back down into the plant by pruning off these dead heads the plant is then able to use that energy to put out these new buds so what i should see in the next week or so is these new buds coming out i'll give y'all an update let you see it when it happens all right y'all so you see how this one looks this is another before i have two of each of these on the porch I'm trying to get this in better light so you can see it more that might be too much light there but you can see how these were kind of a combination of pink and yellow blooms let's see if this might be too bright of light but yeah, they were pink and yellow, so when you get a bunch of these spent ones on there, you can really see them, and it's very noticeable. So we're going to cut those off again on this one, and I'll let y'all see too that this is a pot of all of the expired blooms that I just gathered in my little watering container. Once this is done, I will dump these out and compost them. We'll see if we get any surprise blooms that come up from the compost pile. And otherwise, I will um, empty this out and then get to watering so here my is another one of my mums where this is purple mums. The one I showed you before right here is actually white mums. They started putting out that purple color after I watered them with some miracle Grow. So I think that made the difference for them. But back to the purple mums. You can see here where they have a lot of um, spent brown flowers and it's really unappealing to look at at least to me when you got all the brown coming up so again i'm going to cut all of these back and that's really called deadheading a lot of times people talk about deadheading roses but it's important to deadhead your mums too and this section right here you can see that i've already done once you do that it opens up a bunch of clear green space so the leaves are doing well they're still alive and if you look really closely You'll see too where there are new buds that are trying to come out. So again, once you cut all of this um, dead part back and deadhead the spent flowers, this will help the energy go back into the plant and it'll be able to push out some new blooms. Um, I don't know where I read that. I don't know if it was one year when I really wanted to get to the root of why my mums were always dying. And I water them, I don't think I said earlier, twice a day in the morning and in the afternoon. Hardly, usually 
if I can get out, it'll be early morning, like before six o'clock or late evening, like after seven o'clock. And I do that because watering them in the evening, not too heavy, but just enough to make the soil moist. Um, but watering them in the evening will kind of help the plant absorb what it needs to absorb overnight and get ahead of the noonday heat that we have here in New Orleans. And then again, I give it a little more water in the morning because we have hot evenings in New Orleans, even though it is, um, what I got these, I think back in September and it's now October, but not October, it's not November. I got these in September, I think late September, early October, and it's now November um, after my birthday. So it's like November 15th, 16th. Yeah. So either way, I wanted to share this with you because like I said, I was trying to get to the root of what was going on with my mums, why my mums look like they had new blooms that were going to come out, but sometimes they never did. And I am at the point now where I like to keep my mums and then I'll overwinter them, put them in the ground and they'll come back the following year. So let me show you two these other mums that I got these are mums this um, orange and bronze or orange and burgundy set came from Costco these white mums that have evolved to be purple came from Lowe's as did these purple mums they came from Lowe's so my goal is to get these out and into the ground so I can add into that landscaping over there and as always, I like to have flowers that perennialize. And what does that mean? It means that if you plant them one season and they're able to um, naturalize, get established, go into the ground, they will come back every year. Perennials are your flowers that come every year, um, come back every year on their own if they're in the ground. Annuals are the plants that you have to plant annually. So that means every year you yourself have to get out and replace them. So I like to get plants that are perennials or annuals that might be sold as annuals that can actually perennialize like my lantanas I've shown y'all before. I like to get those kind of plants just to know that I get them in the ground, I get them established, and if they're happy in my growing environment, they'll come back for me every year. So I wanted to share with y'all too a little bit of our landscaping updates. I put these grasses out and rocks because this this area gets really inundated with water whenever it rains and in New Orleans we tend to get a lot of rain believe it or not New Orleans has the highest rainfall in I don't know if it's the world or the country, um, and that is including Seattle, Washington. People don't realize how much rain we get down in Louisiana and especially in New Orleans. And that is a random fact that I learned at one of my water planning conventions that I went to where we talk a lot about living with water and how to manage water and water systems here in New Orleans and Louisiana. So I just want to share that to you with y'all. I'll fact check that and get um, a link and put something maybe in a pop-up up here so that y'all can know more about that. Um, but yeah going on with mums i don't want y'all to have bad opinions of mums because mums really are your friends and can be a beautiful flower to have both on your patio and in your landscape and like i said i've had these out here chilling like some villains since uh october and at first they were all just closed but so i really love how they've come out i'm gonna clean this one up this one don't count right yet but this one even has bounced back just in appearance from how i've pruned it and over here my other little collection so there's some yellow ones on the porch that have done mostly well all on their own um but i'm a deadhead those too this one i kind of did most of the deadheading too so it looks like a hot mess but i will cut it down more when some more blooms start to come out and then reshape this a little bit but yeah just want to let y'all know mums can be your best friend mum can mums can be a very good patio and landscape plant but you gotta do your deadheading to make them look their best I'll get back to this one and then I'll probably just show y'all a quick picture at the end of how it turned out. So yeah, y'all, I will definitely keep y'all updated on these. I have even grown some other mums that I put into the ground this year that I will have to show y'all. Please be encouraged, mums are not as challenging as they sometimes can seem and you can even grow them from year to year. So I hope you give it a try. I'm going to do my best to post some updates for y'all so that you can see how these continue to do once I get them in the ground and hopefully established down here in New Orleans. So check back on the next What's Growing Wednesday to see if these are a part of the update. And as always, this is Fix It With Fran, where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. Just want to remind and encourage you that while there are many problems that exist in the world, I believe God has given us all gifts and talents that can fix some problem that exists in the world. And while we may not be able to fix everything, again, I want to remind and encourage you to remember that we can all fix something. So till next time, I pray that you will find that thing and fix it. Let me know, are you going to try to keep your mums growing? And keep me updated as we go along in this journey. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share if you like to. Uh -huh.